weekend, actually, or this past weekend, I did something that's quite funny because I think it might be like a subconscious reaction um, to what's been happening at Man United. For some reason, out of the blue, I was like, you know what? Let me just start watching Flipping The Walking Dead. I've never watched it because I'm not super into horror. I'm not really into, what do we call it? Horror. I'm not really super into like zombie stuff. I don't really give a fuck. Um, I feel like they're all the same. Um, they, they get kind of boring after a while. They kind of get kind of quite repetitive. And to be fair anyway, um, I did bail out at The Walking Dead from like season four. I kind of bailed out. Um, I think I finished season four, but I, I didn't really want to continue it after that because I thought it was getting quite repetitive. But I have to be honest, I understand the hype. I understand the hype around The Walking Dead a lot now that I've watched it. I fully, fully get The Walking Dead hype. And I really did have a good time sort of watching it and whatnot. And it kind of reminded me, actually, it reminded me of why I feel like modern day TV and movies have been so lackluster in the last few years. Because maybe it's because The Walking Dead was written maybe a few years ago. If I'm not mistaken, it might have been like 2007 or something like that. And around then, I feel like the whole political, ideologically possessed theme or trend we have now at the moment wasn't as prominent. Nowadays, um, instead of just doing like representative movie making or making sure that the, the cast are just diverse based on just their acting skills alone, what they can offer, not having the same old people in flipping roles, not whitewashing roles. Like the other day, I saw a clip. No, the other day, sorry, I watched half of flipping them. Um, Ghost in the Shell, the legendary anime and manga, and it stars Scarlett Johansson in it, and it's fucking hilarious because Scarlett Johansson looks nothing like the lead woman in A Ghost in the Shell. Um, so, you know, whatever. They put her in there because she's the most famous white actress they could get who probably matches that role, and it was pretty horrible casting-wise. And um, all that sort of stuff, I think, is annoying because... No one's saying you should only hire Asian actors to play, um, you know, anime-based kind of characters when they get into a movie adaptation, which would be nice. But let's at least maybe go for an interesting option, one that hasn't been kind of, you know, thought of before, not the most obvious and bait one, whatever. Diversity boxes and all that sort of stuff get on my nerves. And the only reason why they get on my nerves, really, especially when it comes to movies, is because they don't lead to good storytelling. It's not as if they they get these writers in based on their that you know what they kind of represent what they kind of present as or based on their race and then there are also amazing writers too who have fresh new ideas it's just them essentially trying to create the world that they would like to live in via a movie or it's just really basic writing so it doesn't really fix anything so that's the thing that kind of is annoying and then and then obviously in the effect of that we the customer we're the ones that quote unquote get punished because we then get subpar products so I think The Walking Dead did a really good job of depicting the characters in that series as neither good nor bad, somewhere in between. They were all kind of great. And I love the fact that in for the first four seasons that I watched anyway, the main dude who kind of plays like the good guy, the Superman, the hero dude, Rick, who's the policeman, every time he faces an opponent, a villain, a bad guy, there's a lot of each other. They see a lot of each other in, in each other, right? It's kind of like a mirror. They're holding up against each other because one person's been brought up or has had different experiences um, trying to navigate the world now that it's been ravaged by flipping um, zombies and everyone's passed away and society has fallen down and they have to make a new thing. They're all trying to just make sense of it. But they're neither evil nor good. It's just whatever kind of you know allows their group their people to survive the longest and i love that kind of duality and that kind of con you know that kind of friction that exists in the show and if anything it makes a pretty average basic show premise stand out because the characters in it the actors in it do a marvelous job of portraying that they do a really good job of kind of displaying what it would be like falling into the depths of psychosis right how you can sometimes let your emotions um, and your feelings of situation that you're in sort of like change you um, you see it with a kid as well where how he slowly and surely starts to become very cold very distant um, he grows up too quickly probably um, and then he has other flashes where you can see sort of like the adolescence in him come out but I think all that stuff is super interesting and I also love that I think in the past when I was when I would watch these um, post-apocalyptic type things that sort of deal with our own morality and existence and shit, especially once the world has gone down, it used to get on my nerves because there'd always be one or two characters in it who were just hell-bent on returning back to normal. I just want to get back to normal. And crying, right? Where they'd want to go, they want to have a party, they want to drink, they want to dance, um, 
whatever, right? They want to scream and shout. Like there'll be, there'll always be a character that's just annoying because whatever they they're doing or whatever they want to do is super loud and will essentially get the rest of the group in trouble or lead to their death. But having gone through what we went through with the plague, so with the plague, basically it was a plague. Having gone through what we went through with the pandemic, with COVID, it does make a lot of sense. There were a lot of people during the during COVID. I wasn't one of them, which is nice to be fair, because I can be sometimes quite panicky in my own places. But I I was a little bit of a of a dilettante. Like I followed the news, I followed the science. I was like keep it in place. I was doing all that really losery stuff. But there were some people who were panicking that they would never have their normal lives restored again. So they were doing everything in their power to live their normal lives within the restrictions that were given to them. They would push the line all the flipping time and it'd be a constant battle with them to kind of just like relax, relax. They wouldn't relax, 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 wouldn't relax. And you saw some people get a little bit too crazy, right? And it literally affected their, their, you know, their flipping state of mind, which is also sad to see. But I feel like that depiction is based in reality because we saw it with COVID. We saw it with COVID in HD. People just not knowing what to do with themselves now that all of their sort of like, you know, creature comforts and leisure activities and things that they, that kind of give them meaning was kind of shipped away from them. And if anything, I think for me, it just gave me the appreciation of the things I do have because, you know, um, sometimes we all know the saying, comparisons of thief of joy but sometimes you can't af- avoid it especially when you're amongst your peer group and different people are doing different things and some people are striving and you're maybe stuck in the same position it can be hard not to compare yourself with other people and think damn man if only i did that if only i did this but what covid and the pandemic did is that it gave me a lot of appreciation it made me very um you know yeah basically i, I just felt like grateful that the things that I did have were worth um, were worth the time that I invested in them. And I was going to make sure that once I was able to do them again, I wouldn't take it for granted. That's essentially what happened. And I feel like in this series, The Walking Dead, the thing that really makes it interesting is that there doesn't seem to be any hope. <laughs> you know, there isn't a light in the tunnel. I think that's the only little criticism I'll say of these type of shows. They're a little bit too much of a Debbie Downer. There's never a light in the tunnel. Like, there's never, like, every time they think, every time there's a rumor of some, like, you know, utopia, some mecca, some place where people are safe and they don't have to keep their their eye open in terms of zombies, um, they can flip and relax, they can, their children could grow up in relative peace, education. Whenever there's a place like that, it always gets overrun or something happens and blah, blah, blah. There's, it's just never safe. Ever, 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 which is a really sad part about the whole entire series and the other thing about it also i would have wanted there to be a little bit more of a look at how society fell and how they're trying to restore it like that would have been pretty interesting to see because i think sometimes a lot of these zombie series can get way too much in the weeds with the interpersonal conflicts and relationships and drama and shit which to me feels a bit soap opery and not really my vibe but i know that people do enjoy that but i would love to see how you start again right how you have people contribute into society what does government look like what does the police look like how do you deal with people who commit crimes blah 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 all these things would be quite interesting to see in terms of you know answering different questions of what type of um you know government is best in these sort of places whatever if that was ever happened in real life but i guess you can't really suspect real life things in these sort of occasions but one of the best things i loved about the show like I said before, was that no one was either fully bad or fully good. And the best example of that was this character called Merle in the show, who's depicted as the neo-Nazi um, trailer trash white guy, right? Um, who espouses some very dicey, dicey views on the people that look like me, um, women and shit and whatever it may be, right? And society at large. And throughout the entire show, he kind of, until the moment he dies, he sort of has a redemption arc. And it's also good to see that although he's got these really, um, you know, bad traits or these bad personality things or the bad way he looks at the world, there is certain things that he will never do. He has certain lines in the sands. There are certain things that to him seem just unforgivable. And I love that one of them was rape. There's one of the people in it who's a villain in, I think, season two or three. And um, 
he basically walks in on that guy looking like he's going to rape this girl that he took hostage and or for interrogation to find out where the other camp is and it immediately startles him immediately kind of startles him even though he doesn't know the girl or anything it startles him it doesn't make him feel well and then he sort of starts to realize oh the guy i'm working for the guy who's my boss is not only a quote unquote badass in terms of what he does he's also a little bit sick this guy needs to be stopped i need to stop him and from then on you kind of see it kind of sows a seed of like um rev it kind of sows the seed of rebelism in his head where he's like you know what I'm going to make sure that I end this guy's life. I'm going to put an end to this. And in the end, unfortunately, it leads to his death and he doesn't, but it does go some way to sort of redeem his image and what he basically is like on the show. And I think like nowadays, that kind of character who's the resident, you know, uh, right winger, loves Trump, neo-Nazi character will never have a redeeming quality. They'll always be painted as completely, completely just an evil person and they'll probably die a spectacular death. And I feel like, we need more of that type of storytelling because that's more reflective of actual real life. And even if it wasn't, it poses far better interesting premises and questions for the viewer to ponder over and consider. It's not just so black and white because life, unfortunately, isn't so black and white either. And I feel like when it comes to like shows, one of the examples being Star Trek Discovery with the main actress being somebody who also was in The Walking Dead earlier on, um, she's incredibly annoying on that show if you watch Star Trek Discovery, only because there's nothing that she does that's quote unquote wrong. Everything that she does is somewhat justifiable, even if it's her being selfish, putting the, the rest of the group in jeopardy, be, being self-centered, um, you know, being unwilling to work with, uh, with a team, um, not wanting to acquiesce to authority, all these type of things in the series are annoying to watch as a viewer. But for some reason, as it's been written, it's like, oh no, everything that she did, although it wasn't a good thing, in the end, everyone got it was a good thing. There are never like really deep bad consequences for the things that she does there are minor inconveniences but not like consequences that could lead to somebody's death like we saw in the walking dead like someone just you know might have the good grace to let somebody go but letting that person go might lead to the death of certain people in your group turning a blind eye to certain things might lead to death of certain people like there's one really like innocent thing which is really sad where the kid in the show i think his name is carl the main character's son he wanders off because, again, you know, the, the kids in this show are kind of annoying, but you also understand that it's sort of similar to real life too because kids are fucking annoying. And you'd imagine living in a post-apocalyptic world where you don't see any future in sight for you and most likely you think you're going to die and you just want to have a normal kind of kid's existence. You're going to wander and try and do things because you're just bored of sitting around feeling you know, sad for yourself. So the kid wanders off and tries to explore and he happens to stumble across a zombie, a walker, as they say on the show. And he has a little scuffle with the zombie, escapes with his life, thankfully, because I think the zombie gets stuck on something, whatever happens, right? He's fortunate to get away. But as a real kid, he gets scared and doesn't want to tell his parents because if he tells his parents, they're going to find out he walked away and he's going to get in big trouble. So he kind of keeps it to himself for what happened. But unfortunately, that same walker that he failed to stop was the same walker that then came back later on and killed somebody else in the group. A dear, like, you know, a loved member in the group. And he was feeling so cut up that he eventually did tell his parents about it. But, you know, by that time, the, red, the guys were already dead. What, what can you do? And I feel like those tragic, r really brutal um, consequences of a show really do a good job of making the show be grounded in some base of reality. And it kind of reminds me a little bit of why I like that show. I can't remember the name. I think it was... 192 or something like that it was, it was a numbers it's like this canadian tv show um based on police over there and it was really good really good because of that incredibly harsh realities of what it must be like to be a police officer in a major city in canada where they've got intersection of like you know organized crime uh biker gangs drugs immigration unemployment the wealth gap all these sort of things interjecting at the same time and then they've also got if i'm not mistaken in that series the police department is severely under underfunded right and you've got people essentially trying to scam or kind of, you know basically finagle hours to get more money and whatever the pressure of society did da, 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 da. and i love that in that show there are things that happen to police officers where they die or get in tragic situations that are just the most 
minor thing that sort of like spirals into something crazy. And I think that's what essentially would happen if you're a police officer, right? You'd really have to be, have your head in a swivel, mind your P's and Q's, and never take anything for face value. Everything has to be questioned because it could be a life and death situation. So again, I'm sure most of you know about The Walking Dead and I'm really late on it. Like I said before, um, I'm not going to watch the entire things like 11 seasons. I tapped out of four. Um, a lot of it for the end of it, I tried to skip around because some of the dialogue, when it gets soppy and I want to marry you, I want to have children, whatever, I don't give a fuck. But the general premise of the show, very well done. Not gonna lie, very well done, very impressed. And again, like I said, I, I just wish there'd be a little improvements here and there. But some of the acting performances, I'm not surprised some of them got some awards because they've done it really good. That that spiraling into depression, anxiety, um, the panic attacks, whatever, all this sort of stuff, I thought was incredible. So big up everybody on that show um, for what they did. And of course, um, you know, I get the zombie thing. We all kind of, you know, what's the thing? Question our own mortality from time to time, especially the older you get. So it makes sense why these shows capture people so much. And I guess we all have this inflated sense of self. We all probably think we would be the Rick character leading people, but most likely would be like, you know, whoever the cowering coward is in the corner. That's the reality situation, but in your head, you always think you're going to be the, you know, the Rick character. You're going to stand up for justice. You're going to be defending people, you know, whatever. But most likely, you're going to be the carrying one in the corner, waiting for the people who went out to hunt to come back with the food for you to eat on. So it's depressing, but hey, what can you do? What can you do?